Hi everyone, Evelyn here. Today I wanted to talk about the topic of money or the lack thereof. So if you are a college student right now, maybe you're unemployed or maybe for some reason you're not able to work right now, I totally get where you're coming from. And it's a situation where money is pretty tight. And so I'm making this video because I wanted to show that even though your budget is really, really small and you don't have a lot of money to spend on things like going out maybe or going shopping, doing things that you feel adds value to your life, there's still a lot of ways where you can spend a little bit of money and where you can do fun things without having a really big income uh, and without feeling like you're missing out on life. So my number one tip is to track your expenses and this tip is so 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 valuable and so important. Um, so have you ever been on a vacation or you've been um, abroad for a weekend and then you come back from spending a day somewhere uh, and you wonder where the hell your money went because that's happened to me so many times um, especially back in the day when I was a little bit younger you don't really realize when you're holding that money either in your hand or if it's in um, on your bank account you kind of get a little bit blinded to the amount of money that you are supposed to use for certain things so for example sometimes i would have spent so much on like clothing that i would forget that oh shit i need to eat these days too uh, when you have your paycheck so when you get your salary at the end of the month or the beginning of the month it's kind of easy to get blinded by the amount of money that you do actually have um, especially before uh, having paid bills before having paid rent uh, and before you know buying food and things that you really need um, so that's why I also think like along with tracking your expenses it's important to really have a budget and to budget down all the categories I know this sounds a little bit extreme maybe but that is something that I do so that I know how much money I can spend on groceries I know how much money I can spend on nights out I know how money I can spend on coffee I'm, I know how much money I can spend on like bus tickets and stuff like that tip number two is to get creative or get crafty with things you already own and uh, this tip is um, really great because it means that you can reuse the items that you already have at home so it means like mending clothes that are broken um, altering a dress altering a skirt something that you feel doesn't really fit properly now you can always fix it instead of dumping it somewhere because sometimes we own items that did cost us a lot of money and we don't want to just throw it away so uh, learning to just mend things for example sometimes like you have like a backpack or something that you're bored of like try to do something like spice it up a little bit like put like embroidery on it or something another tip that goes along with this tip is to start doing things for yourself that you would normally pay for so this would be any service like uh, doing your own nails at home, learning to cut your own hair, waxing at home, anything like that. And I'm sorry to say this, but we do live in such a patriarchal world right now. And every single like beauty or salon experience is super overpriced, unfortunately, if you're a woman. Um, and I'm sorry if you're a guy watching this, I guess the equivalent of a man paying for beauty services would maybe like going to the barber shop and maybe like learning to trim your own beard or something. Tip number three is to bring your own food from home to work or school and I'm so guilty of having to having worked somewhere which was in retail where I worked in the city and I know that it's so easy to just kind of ditch your home cooked meal to get a takeout but if you add up for example for me every time I ate out uh, at work for a lunch it would be a hundred kroner so if you add that times five and then add down those times times 4.5 which is basically the whole month you will see that it's so much unnecessary spending that you could just you know save somewhere for for something else or you could actually like just buy something nice for yourself it's not the most fun thing maybe to cook every day but really it will make such a difference for your money and for your budget to be honest like now i don't really even have the money or i don't even have the luxury of being able to eat out because I'm so my income is so like little even if I wouldn't have to bring my own food from home I would probably still do it because it saves it saves you so much money and not only saves you money but it also you can also control how much you're eating the proportion of the food and what you're actually taking into your body because 
you know exactly what's in your food, like the ingredients and everything. So tip number four is actually quite related to tip number three, and it is to bring your own snacks from home if you know you're gonna be away for some time. And if you're anything like me and you get hungry quite a lot, I always bring like some snack with me if I'm commuting a lot because from the time that I eat lunch to going home in the bus or on the train, I, I know that I'm gonna get like a little bit hungry or almost like hangry because I'm so like exhausted as well from the day <laughs> and it's so easy to just kind of like go into the corner shop and buy a pastry or like buy a sandwich or just buy something sweet just because you're you know you don't the decision making process is not really working that well when you're like hungry and exhausted it will just be so good for you because you'll you'll come home and you won't feel that urge as well to just kind of overeat which is something that I'm guilty of when I come home late from work and I just want to eat something fast. The point number five is also related to point three and four which is to never leave your home hungry. But yeah like I said I am someone who tends to get hungry quite a lot like during the day so I always, unless I'm going to a restaurant of course, I always try to eat something before like I'm going out to see a friend or I'm working or studying or doing anything like that where I know I'm gonna be away for like a little while. It will stop the urge to want to buy something at a, at a cafe for example because at cafes, let's be real, the food is like pretty expensive compared to drinks. Even drinks are really expensive there. Uh, make sure that you are not hungry when you leave your home so like I, I would always like fry up an egg unless you're a vegan. Um, because that keeps me full for a long time. Point number six is to skip cocktails and just drink wine or beer on nights out. Um, and if you're someone who likes beer, then really, that's really good for you because <laughs> beer is usually the cheapest thing that bars have on their menu. Um, but if you don't like beer, I would really suggest you starting to like wine if you don't already. Um, it took me a little bit of time to like wine when I first started drinking, but now I really love it and it's it's just great. So, what I figured out is a cider on a night out in Stockholm is about 59 to 69 kroner in a regular cheap bar. And a cider is never more, usually, than 6% alcohol. Well, a glass of wine is around 79 or 89 kroner in a normal bar. But wine usually contains on an average of 11% alcohol, which means what exactly? For just 20 kroner extra, or in this case 30%, you would get twice the amount of alcohol with just one glass of wine for the amount you're spending on cider. Once you learn to like it, it's gonna be okay, okay? It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice. This point leads me to point number seven, which, um, this, this point leads me to point number six. Oh my god, I can't talk today. This point leads me to point number seven, which is to booze at home, not in the club. I don't think I know anyone who would ever buy drinks in the club. Um, maybe it's just like the people that I hang out with, or maybe it's just, well, I don't know. But <laughs> for any normal person, I think this is like pretty obvious, right? Because drinks in clubs are way, way more expensive than if you would go to a normal bar. This is a, such a no-brainer to me. Like, don't spend money on booze in the club. Just get drunk beforehand. And also, when you're in the club, you usually are a little bit tipsy or if not, like, super drunk. And when you're drunk, you don't make good money decisions. So either you'll most likely you're going to pay for a round of drinks for everybody, which people you might not even know, and you can't afford that. And secondly, you won't know where your money went the next day. Point number eight is to remember to always carry your loyalty card or membership card wherever you go. Um, and I always carry at least my ID with me, um, you know, wherever I go, because at least in Sweden, your like the loyalty card or memberships are usually tied up into your identity card. So that's really good um, if you wanna go shopping somewhere or even like the grocery store. And I know guys, like it doesn't sound like a lot when, when the store says, oh, you get 10% off if you're a member or say 5% on this fruit. Like it sounds really, really lame and really small. When you add up those discounts over the course of like a month, you'll see that you'll have saved a lot. It's one of those things where you can't see it in the beginning because it seems like such a, an insignificant small thing <laughs> but when you see it at the end you'll see how much money you'll have saved and sometimes you know 
on their rare occasional day, they'll have like a 50% off for members only thing. So if you have your loyalty card with you then, you're gonna be able to, you know, buy that dress that you were looking at. Point number nine is to make shopping lists and keep them on you at all times. Actually, you don't have to keep them on you at all times, unless it's something that you're planning to buy once you get your salary and then your salary starts coming slowly your way. This will help you keep your shopping intentional. Being intentional with your shopping means that you will steer away from impulse buys which is something that I think most people are guilty of. You know, usually when you go into a grocery store, I think this happens to everybody, unless you're like, you have super good memory. You kind of go into this grocery store with a mental shopping list, and then you go out of the store, buying everything but the things that were on that list. If we go to a grocery store, if we are hungry, for example, we would, would just buy like a lot of snacks. It's not even something that you wanted from your start. It's just because it's all there and it smells delicious and then you buy it, then you forget to buy milk, which was like the, the only thing that you, you were gonna buy. Um, so tip number 10 is to buy filtered coffee when you're in a cafe. And the reason for this is because filtered coffee is usually the cheapest thing that any cafe will have on their menu. Um, but the thing that happens when you buy filtered coffee, at least here in Sweden, is that you get something called potor, which is a refill. So every time your, you know, your cup is empty, you get a refill. With that, you can, first of all, you can spend really, really little money and sit there for a really long time. And I feel like this is something that used to hinder me so much because when I spend time with my friends at least, like back home, they would always end up with us going to a cafe. And I know that in the cafe, I would spend a lot of money. Now I don't anymore because I know that you can buy just one thing and it will last forever. However, I actually don't drink coffee anymore, but this is something that I used to do when I was drinking coffee. Tip number 11 is to avoid buying single tickets in public transportation. Invest in buying like a, a bus pass or a train pass that will last for a longer period of time. And this is a tip that I know seems like such an amount of money. And trust me, I know this because it's so easy to just buy those single tickets all the time. Uh, but if you don't track how much those single tickets are, over the course of a month, you'll see how much freaking money that is. So in Stockholm, a single pass, or a single ticket, is 37 kroner per adult per ride in the subway slash bus. And a monthly pass is 930 kroner, which is the one that I buy, which by the way is an insane amount. If I buy the single tickets, that would amount to almost 300 kroner, which for just one week, and that is assuming that I'm not going anywhere else but work. If I were to go somewhere on weekends, I can only imagine how much more it would be. Whereas if you buy a monthly pass of a spicy 930 kroner and divide that by weeks, it would only be about 200 kroners a week. And with that, I can basically go anywhere I want for seven days a week because that's the beauty of the subway in Stockholm you can go really really far and you say, still pay the same price so tip number 12 is to work out at home uh, so I've never really been a gym person but I remember that when I lived with a friend we lived in such a tiny apartment that I had to literally go out to work out and I couldn't work out at home because if I worked out at home I would wake her up every morning so back then I would spend so much money on a gym because I also am someone who likes to take classes at gym like you know how yoga and all those like bougie ones and it was like more than 500 kroner a month and that's not something that you want to pay so now that I have my own space I just work out at home and I usually work out with um, a yoga mat and I do some YouTube workout programs like Blogilates for example, but there's so many other things that you can do guys. Like you can go for walks, you can go running outside, you can go biking, you can dance. Like there's so many things you can do that doesn't require you to go to a physical gym to work out. I like working out at home, especially during the winter because it gets freaking cold and I hate going anywhere when it's cold. <laughs> Point number 13 is to not go into stores that have sales. And I know this sounds a little bit counterintuitive, like, Evelyn, but... Isn't this where I can actually go in and splurge on something because it will be cheaper? Don't do that. Because when there's sales, you tend to go into a store and you just look around to buy something 
just to buy something and just because it's cheap. You usually spend more money even than you bargained for. We want sales because we want things to be cheaper, but then it kind of blinds us to the fact that we don't even want these things. It's just the, I think it's just like this crazy desire to want to buy something for ourselves or like gift ourselves something and feel good about ourselves that we just, we just buy whatever there is as long as it's on a freaking sale rack. A really good tip for when buying on sales is that uh, pick up an item that you want and maybe go try it on or whatever and then ask yourself would i buy this item if it wasn't on sale and if your answer is no then you probably don't need it you probably don't even want it okay guys so that marks the end of this video thank you so much for watching i hope that these tips are somewhat useful for you in your life and that you realize that you can still treat yourself and live an awesome life without having to you know own a lot of money or without having to have a lot of money. Before you head off and click off this video, I just want to remind you that if you did like my video and if you do like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out with my channel growth and it would be really nice if you could click that like button down below or give me a comment um, because I really really like talking to you guys and answering comments. I hope you have a good rest of your day and stay safe guys. Bye!